Next order. Order number nine, motion, report on the 2024 budget policy statement. Dendi Nyoro, Chairman, Budget and Appropriations Committee. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I wish to move that this House adopts the report of the Budget and Appropriations Committee on the policy, uh, budget policy statement, that is BPS, for the financial year 2024-2025 and a compendium of departmental committee reports on the 2024 BPS laid on the table of the House on Tuesday, 5th March 2024 and pursuant to the provisions of Article 25.7 of the Public Finance Management Act 2012 and starting order 232 9 and 10. A approves the budget policy statement that is BPS for the financial year 2024-2025. B makes the following financial resolutions with respect to BPS. Roman 1, that the national government budget ceiling be approved at Kenya shillings 2.5 trillion uh, 564 100,000 of which the executive gets Kenya shillings 2 trillion 488 billion 650 uh, million 300,000 of which Office of the Auditor General gets 8 billion 599 million 500,000 Parliament Kenya shillings 43 million 43 billion 623,000 uh, 623 million judiciary 23 billion 690 million 300,000 Roman 2 resolves that the allocation to county government's equitable share be approved at 391 billion 117 uh, uh, million Roman 3 resolves that Consistent with the latest audited and approved revenues for financial year 2020-2021, amounting to Kenya shillings 1 trillion 570 billion 562 million 945,014 uh, uh, shillings, the allocation to the equalization fund be set at 7 billion. 852 million 814 723 shillings. Roman 4 approves that the arrears to the equalization fund be set at Kenya shillings 3 billion 347 million 185,275 shillings. Approves that allocation to county additional allocation be approved at Kenya shillings 48 billion 186 million 590,924 shillings as per the third schedule which shall form the basis for the county government additional allocation bill 2024. 6. Roman 6. Resolves that consistent with the approved borrowed st uh, borrowing strategy in the medium term the debt management strategy, the projected fiscal deficit B, set at Kenya shillings, 703 billion, 870 million, that is 3.9% of our GDP, being the difference between total revenue and grants and total expenditure and net lending. C, Honorable Speaker, that the first and second schedule form the basis for the ceilings for the financial year 2024-2025 budget estimates. D, that once approved by the House, these recommendations shall form the basis for financial year 2024-2025 budget estimates. E, orders that the first schedule to the order paper forms the basis for the ceilings for the financial year 2024-2025 budget estimates and F, makes the policy resolutions contained in the second schedule 
to the order paper that is non-financial recommendations relating to the budget policy statement for the financial year 2024-2025. Honorable Speaker, I, it's a, I want to allocate myself some role, Honorable Speaker, to request that, if possible, we can move together with my colleagues, because there are some far-reaching issues that we are going to talk about as I bring forth this motion. And I say so because I know there are some policy issues that we have been able to put in place that has got far-reaching implications to what we do here in the House and especially as we serve the people of Kenya. And therefore, it is possible we can move together. But first of all, Honorable Speaker, I take this opportunity to thank you because of according our committee the right environment for us to work in the last two weeks, Honorable Speaker, to be able to come up with this report that we are debating today. Honorable Speaker, I also wish to thank the, all the memberships of departmental committees, which are 20 in number, and especially led by their chairs, majority of whom I can see here today, Honorable Murugara, Honorable KJ, Honorable um, Motonga, representing all the others, including Honorable Kagongo, Honorable Speaker, for taking time with their members, Honorable Speaker, sitting long hours for the last two weeks, Honorable Speaker, to be able to make recommendations that, I, that, that they did. To all the departmental chairs, majority of whom, Honorable Speaker, are here, all of them 20, I could have said them by name only because of time, because they are all my friends. I want them to feel appreciated because the Budget Committee will never do this within that short of time, Honorable Speaker, without the kind of cooperation that we got from the departmental chairs and their memberships. Honorable Speaker, I also wish to thank the members of the Budget and Appropriations Committee. Honorable Speaker, majority of whom had actually taken leave from their homes for the last two weeks. Honorable Speaker, working day and night so that we deliver to our country the right policy statement and especially by setting ceilings that you need to accelerate economic growth. Honorable Speaker, even to the Parliamentary Budget Office, an office that falls under you as our head here in Parliament, I want to thank them for being very meticulous, led by Dr. Masibe and all the other team from the Parliamentary Budget Office. Honorable Speaker, we came here last year and did the same kind of a report. It is important that I appraise my colleagues on the leaps you have taken especially forward. Honorable Speaker, last financial year, we came here and made the main budget. We have also come to this house and revised. And out of the policies that have been made by these members of parliament, because as budget committee our work is basically to compile, the power is in this house, Honorable Speaker, out of the good policies made through the wisdom of the colleagues in this parliament, Honorable Speaker, our economy in the year 2023, the first quarter of 2023, the GDP of Kenya grew by 5.5%, Honorable Speaker. In the second quarter of 2023, Honorable Speaker, the GDP of Kenya in the second quarter grew by 5.5%. Honorable Speaker, in the third quarter, our economy, GDP, grew by 5.9%. We are still compiling the figures for the entire year, but it is projected, Honorable Speaker, that the Kenyan GDP in 2023 actually grew by 5.6 percent, Honorable Speaker, which makes Kenya the 28th fastest growing economy in the world. Honorable Speaker, the economy of Kenya in 2023 grew faster than the economy of China. The economy of Kenya, Honorable Speaker, in 2023 grew by many multiples, actually, the economy of the United States of America. The economy of Kenya, Honorable Speaker, grew not just by our standards as released by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, but also the data released by international organization and also Bretton Woods organizations, Honorable Speaker, 
including IMF and World Bank. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, I want to thank this House for the good policies that we have put in place that is leading to accelerated economic growth in our country. And the data I'm giving, Honorable Speaker, as you know, I have no capacity to generate data. My work is just to lift and report. And the data that I'm reporting is the data presented to us even by the international organizations. Honorable Speaker, there are other parameters of which we used to determine where the economy is headed. One, as I have said, is GDP. The other parameter, Honorable Speaker, that is very important for us to note is our markets. Our markets, Honorable Speaker, there is the commodity market, there is the exchange rate market, and there is the money market. All these, Honorable Speaker, are determined by the fiscal policies that we put in place and especially alongside the monetary policies. Honorable Speaker, I can report to this House that in the, in the money market, Honorable Speaker, yes, we have seen increased interest rates, Honorable Speaker, but it is because it is a tool that we have been using as a country to control especially the other markets, namely the exchange rate market and also the commodities market. Honorable Speaker, in the commodities market, we measure the trades of the prices using what we call inflation. And Honorable Speaker, in regards to inflation, we segment inflation into three buds or into three categories. One is the food inflation, the other one is fuel inflation, and the other one is what we call non-food, non, non non-fuel, or co-inflation. Honorable Speaker, in total, in the month of January, the inflation in Kenya had come down on year to year to 6.9%. Honorable Speaker, as I speak here today, in the month of February, the inflation in Kenya had climbed down to 6.3%, Honorable Speaker, which is actually within our own targets as a country, because our target as a country in terms of inflation is 5% and above of 2.5%, either way, that is plus or minus. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, at 6.3%, we are doing fairly well. Looking forward, Honorable Speaker, and especially driven by food inflation. We can see our inflation going lower and lower, Honorable Speaker, and especially on the lower bud, which is below 5%. Honorable Speaker, on the, same, on the same breath, we have seen quite significant improvements in our exchange rate market. Honorable Speaker, at some point, we could see the other currencies running against our local currency. But recently, Honorable Speaker, out of the meticulous policies by this House and also the right, uh, the right government instruments, and especially Central Bank of Kenya, we have been able to see gradually our domestic currency, Honorable Speaker, becoming stronger and stronger. And Honorable Speaker, some of the issues that I've talked about are far-reaching, but they are also very important. And there is something that we are doing on each. And Honorable Speaker, one of the things that we are targeting in terms of the economic growth, number one, is that as, you all, as the members of this house know, even as we grow the primary production, which basically is the bulwark of our economy, it also behoves of all of us to have the right policies that also accelerate secondary production and also tertiary production. But Honorable Speaker, in terms of primary production, in this BPS, we have been able to allocate significant ceilings on our speaker for the purchase of farm inputs, for the purchase of fertilizer that is subsidized, for the purchase of seed, honorable speaker, both for cash crops and food crops. Honorable speaker, we have input ceilings for the purchase of BT cotton, which is also a cash crop in Kenya, honorable speaker, and for other issues that I'll be talking about as I conclude. Honorable speaker, in regards to inflation, what we have major control on, Honorable Speaker, is the food inflation and the core inflation. Because the fuel inflation, to a large extent, is determined by exogenous variables, Honorable Speaker, variables beyond our control. And Honorable Speaker, in terms of food inflation, which we can clearly put in policies, in this BPS, Honorable Speaker, as I said earlier, we have laid down the enough resources so that we continue 
to boost our production of food so that honorable speaker we can have enough food honorable speaker for the balance between demand and supply as our farmers strive to feed our country honorable speaker also on co-inflation that is part of the reason why we have been seeing an escalation of interest rates the honorable speaker as i moved the same report last year the world was looking gloom and dark because the u.s has made us know when it coughs majority of the other economies catches cold by that time honorable speaker the united states was coughing through something called inflation and for them to contain inflation they had to continually raise their basis points the fed rate actually from zero to two point five 0 to 0 0.25 percent to the current which is around 5.2 percent and 5 percent honorable speaker the united states had to raise the fed rate for 11 consecutive times that had the ramifications at home honorable speaker because as they try to contain their inflation honorable speaker also it causes imbalance honorable speaker in the exchange rate market because their currency is the dominant currency it is a solid currency that the world uses to transact. And honorable speaker, just to appraise members, when we have seen the central bank raising interest rates, and especially in the recent past, up to the current 13% in terms of the base rate, honorable speaker, this has been majorly to control what we call capital, uh, net capital inflows. Honorable speaker, when we talk about currency, when we say the currency is weakening domestically, it happens when there is a lot of demand for the external currency. And honorable speaker, to balance that, then we have to do things that brings about other currencies into Kenya so that we have more supply of other foreign currencies, honorable speaker, to be able to strengthen ours. And honorable speaker, in that regard, that is why central bank had to raise interest rate. Number one, to contain inflation, but more importantly, also number two, honorable speaker, is to make Kenya desirable as, a, as, as an investment destination and especially in regards to capital inflows. Honorable Speaker, exchange rate is determined by the barriers of payment. And the barriers of payment has two components. There is the import and exports, which export and import then gives us net exports. Honorable Speaker, on the other side, there is a plus. And this other plus is of capital inflow minus capital outflow, which then gives us net capital inflows. Honorable Speaker, import and export are handled through fiscal policies. And that is what we've been doing by raising our, our exports, but also by creating an enabling environment for import substitution. Honorable Speaker, on the other side of the capital account, it is managed through monetary policies. And that is why Central Bank of Kenya has been doing the needful so that, Honorable Speaker, we stabilize our currency and we have already seen the fruit of that. Honorable Speaker, the budget that will be presenting later in the year, we have set the ceilings at Kenya shillings. And here I'll talk slowly, Honorable Speaker, if you permit. The, bu the budget that we have set in terms of the ceilings is a budget of Kenya shillings 4.188 trillion. Honorable Speaker, out of 4.188 trillion, we have the revenue side, but also the expenditure side. On the revenue side, our number one revenue stream is the ordinary revenue. We have set our ordinary revenue target at 2.94 trillion shillings, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, after that, we have what we call appropriations in aid. That is the money that government institutions receive when they offer service to the Kenyan people. For example, when you pay university fee in a public institution, that is the money government institutions are given authority to spend at source. And AMA, Honorable Speaker, we have set AMA at 486 billion Kenya shillings. Honorable Speaker, the other revenue stream are grants. We are expecting grants of 49 billion Kenya shillings. Honorable Speaker, if we add the math, then we see that 
out of what I've enumerated, there is a gap of 703 billion shillings, 0 0.87. 703.87 billion shillings. Honorable Speaker, that is our deficit. On the expenditure side, Honorable Speaker, there is the, and I hope members, uh, we are together. On the expenditure side, we categorize majorly into three thematic areas. Number one is the executive or national government expenditure. National government expenditure, Honorable Speaker, we have set a ceiling of 2.557 trillion. Honorable Speaker, national government incorporates the executive and the judiciary and uh, parliament, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I see my time is almost up, so let me go to specifics. If uh, this is to alert me. I thought I have 30 minutes, but... Uh, you have 30 seconds. Yeah? <laughs> you have 30 seconds. Honorable Speaker, I beg because I have been misinformed, kindly by your indulgence, five minutes, I go to the areas that touches on, on, on the real issues. Okay. I thought I had 30 minutes. Okay. Honorable members, as I indulge the chairman with five minutes, remember that you passed a motion that on a debate of this nature, the seconder and all of you contributing are entitled to only five minutes each. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. I'll go to specifics. Honorable Speaker, there are very many important things that we've been able to do, and I'll talk fast now. One out of the threat we have in terms of security, we have enhanced the ceilings of majority of our security organs, Honorable Speaker, because we cannot talk about economic growth when we have security challenges. What, Honorable Speaker, there is 67 billion Kenya shillings. We have allocated 220 billion Kenya shillings into roads, and especially going into completion of ongoing tarmac roads, Honorable Speaker. On agriculture, we have put money for fertilizer subsidy, Honorable Speaker, across all the crops, fertilizer that is crop-specific, Honorable Speaker. We have put money for other inputs, like BT cotton seed, Honorable Speaker, like sunflower uh, seed, and all the others on the value chains that we are targeting. We have also put in a ceiling of Kenya shillings to billion into Kenya cherry fund, into coffee cherry fund, Honorable Speaker, to be able to guarantee coffee farmers prices through guaranteed minimum returns. We have also put in one billion shillings, Honorable Speaker, into sugar reforms, Honorable Speaker, to pay the arrears of, Ken of Kenyan farmers who are owed by factories. We have also enhanced the budget in our health sector to Kenya shillings, one for 51 billion, four billion of which we are giving as conditional grants to our counties and especially to uplift the equipment in our level one, two, and three in our villages. But here is where I need the bus now to capture your attention. Honorable Speaker, many times I get these members of parliament coming to my office. And I am always happy, Honorable Speaker, to benefit from the wisdom of my colleagues. And what I'm talking about here is collective wisdom of this house. Out of that collective wisdom, I also want to laud the President, because he has been a member of this Parliament, and the majority of the things I'm going to read now are actually majority of it his brainchild. One, Honorable Speaker, we have given Social Security 35 billion, so that we facilitate the 70 years and above who got registered last year to also continue or start still, uh, receiving their stipend. We have enhanced the education budget and especially TSC budget specifically, by 26.3 billion shillings, Honorable Speaker. And out of the resolution of this House, all our JSS in plans, who are 26,000 in number, are going to be confirmed through the, this BPS to permanent and pensionable. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, the government will also hire an extra 20,000 in plans, Honorable Speaker, to bridge the gap that is there in our learning institutions. Honorable Speaker, this House, for the dependence of this House and to accelerate efficient legislative role, we have enhanced the budget of Parliament by 2.8 billion Kenya shillings, Honorable Speaker. This majority of it, as members know, many people out there may think legislature is as members of Parliament, but we have staff and apparatus 
Honorable Speaker, our constituency offices, the Kenyans who work there, have made, noted an enhancement. Honorable Speaker, out of this BPS, by July, every month, they'll get an enhancement of 131,000 per month on the constituency offices. Honorable Speaker, the same goes to the drivers and the bodyguards. Honorable Speaker, there was 10 billion Kenya shillings that had been taken to share up the revenue in our counties. I gladly now report to this house that money is now back and will be oversighted by these members of parliament through the Constituency Roads Committee. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, lastly, NGCDF. We have enhanced NGCDF by an extra 8.8 .8 billion shillings. An average of 30 million per constituency on average, Honorable Speaker, so that we accelerate rural uh, development. Lastly, listen to these members. Out of the guidance of the President, His Excellency William Ruto. Order. Order. I'm, gone. I'm coming to that. Order, no, no, no. I'm coming there. Honorable Speaker, this is the most important point that I want to make. We have increased. Members have been coming to my office requesting for money for rural electrification. Honorable Speaker, we had a conversation with the President and we have agreed that REREC is going to get an extra Kenya shillings, 12 billion in this BPF. Give, give him two minutes. Give him two Honorable minutes. Speaker, Honorable Speaker, I want to make this as a, my last point. Two, so two minutes. Two minutes. I've given you another speaker. two minutes. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, this is my last point. I have talked about NGCPF, an enhancement of 8.8 .8 billion. Honorable Speaker, we are already having a conversation. And by the time we table the estimates, even GAF is going to have an enhancement, Honorable Speaker. And lastly, Honorable Speaker, listen to this. We have had a conversation with the President. And through the wisdom of this House, majority of the members, when they come to my office, they request if we can get an enhancement in our rural electrification. Honorable Speaker, out of that, we have enhanced the ceiling of REREC by Kenya Ceiling Store of Billion, Honorable Speaker, out of which REREC already had another budget of 9 billion. Honorable Spe uh, Speaker, out of that, 14.5 billion Kenya shillings is going to be equally divided among all the 290 constituencies because the president is very clear minded that the programs that get oversight from these members, that is what gets done. Honorable Speaker, I seek to move. Who is seconding? Order. Who is seconding? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. As the way we work in terms of this parliament, our departmental committees do a lot, and I seek to request one of the departmental chairs, Honorable KJ, to second this motion. Order. Honorable Speaker, I thank you. And I want to take this very early opportunity as I second. Order, honorable members. Order, honorable Kemei. Is out of order to pick.